and you've always something that I'm very proud of as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that Joe, he says he doesn't really have anything else. Uh, but um, if someone else has any more questions, or if you, Rodolfo, wish to show some of your other stuff, you're welcome to do so. Yeah, I can share it again, show my GitHub. Let's see. So, but here. Well, this one was featured in one of your webinars. It's class LV roles. It's uh, a pack of tools for, for list view controls that are not available for uh, natively for Coral Hotkey. So you can do a lot of stuff. Drag and drop is the, the most cool feature, but you can also have uh, actually a history of, of your states and you can use uh, undo and redo. It's very useful for people with list views. Um, okay, it, does it uh, does it have built-in hotkeys or anything? No, it's 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 a true class or whatever. It's a class. Right. Yeah, you can yeah. incorporate with your scripts. And there's there's also some examples in my repositories here that you can borrow nice. ideas from. Uh, evolve. We talked about it. Really, it evaluates expressions inside strings. Uh, useful for it's very useful when you have user input that you want to convert to code. Uh, TV drag and drop, it's the latest thing I, I did for uh, it's another spin off from PNC that I talked about. This class toolbar and another one that's it's causing here, class rebar. Those was, man, I almost went crazy writing those things. It was, it's because I had to be all uh, at Microsoft's website, understand things and all this, this pointers and bytes and things that are mostly just in this area. But well, I wanted to bar and when our hotkey came with the custom controls, I was waiting for someone to write something. Nobody came with it. So I adventured myself in writing it. And some people use it a lot. It's uh, a nice thing to have. Oh, it's, it's more like uh, old, outdated look, but it's still cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I see Joe, he posted something more in the chat here about the, the LV rows. Uh, we had um, uh, Sean present some of it, and we were talking about the history part of it. Is that something that you can maybe show us a bit about? Sure. How the history in the LV grows actually works. Let's see the project here. Yeah. So. Has, if you share your screen, we can probably follow along better. It's not sharing? No. Oh. I thought it was. Uh, it was at one point, but then it stopped. Let's see again. I think I closed it accidentally. Cool. So the help file, the readme file has a summary of what it can do. And you can see here some, some demo example code here. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Can we get this out of the way? So it's a simple script to demonstrate what it can do. Uh, you have here the, the available functions. You can copy, cut, paste it and it even can be working across different uh, list views because you don't necessarily need to to give it a pointer you can just call the the, the, fun, the method directly from the the class without instantiating okay but to, to use it as a history using undo and redo then you need to instantiate it with its uh, handle so I have here, uh, let me see if it's working. 
delete and undo. See? And it keeps uh, 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 an object with the history of what you've done. So it's, it's just, but it's very automatic. You don't have to do much coding to get it working. Okay. See? For example, uh, here you start the you instantiate the, the list view class with one or more instances of your of list views handles, uh, and then you can switch between them using this command set handle. So you then you can change uh, from one to another. So you can set that in the G label to mm -hmm. set up nicely for for the control. That's that's up to you. and or use it directly without the hands. If you just have one list view, you can just use commands directly unless you're using the history features. And they're very easy as well. You, you do the add method and you create another history entry. You call undo or redo. That's basically uh -oh. I was just, I'm sorry, Rodolfo, I was just going to ask that this method that you just mentioned, right? It keeps the, the control Z one at least, it only keeps track of one change, right? So it is just like you have the one instance of one list view that has the whole thing, the second instance that has the deleted things, and you just switch between those two. But if you want to have a history of more, uh, you know, more actions to be un undone, then you would have to actually keep track of all the actions, right? So that no, no, it's automatic. It's automatic. You just oh, have oh, to. Oh, of course, it has okay. it has its own built-in history thing, but you wouldn't use the the two objects or. Oh right, cool. Yeah. Right, so so you wouldn't use the method of the two objects. In this case, you use the add and you know these options to kind of like keep a history of those. But the control Z is different because it's just two objects that you switch between them, right? That right. So, for example, you have here two list views, so they can right. have their individual history. You see, right. But how how can you do that? You have two options. You can add both handles to the same handle, and you switch between them using the set handle command. Right. Yeah. You click here. It it triggers the it actually, label. Yeah. It changes I, the the object. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I change up. Other and other options to have two objects. That's not a problem as well. You can have one object for this list view and another object for this one. That works yeah. fine as well. Okay, I got it. The drag function that uh, you have to, to call it from the G label, and you have some some options. You can uh, let me see here. Okay. Here. So you have this option. You have you can can tell it what the the, the button you're sending. You can use AD event for that. And what's the the common use for that is that if you're dragging with uh, right click, you, you it, it's not going to to do anything. It's not going to call up a move. You have uh, it return the the fun the, the method drag will return the the target role, and you select the what you want to do from. With it, like showing them a menu to copy or move. It's shown here in the example. And then you can uh, turn off auto scroll, change scroll delay. That's something it's going to do automatically. See? And the, the, the thickness of the line color. And this is something I added recently. Um, it was asked by Jump. He asked for, for a week to, to set uh, a, a modification key, like shift or control. So I had these options where you can set it off. So if you set it to false, it, it won't actually drop the, 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 the row, even if you're dragging with the left button. Oh, it has also this group feature. That's another thing that I can thank just me for that. Let me see if I can enable groups here. Insert group. And you can 
in the script stuff, you have options to 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 set a name uh, and start a name for it. It's just a useful thing for some people. Mm -hmm. These groups and stuff, is that something that's actually built into list views that's just not added to our hotkey or? Yes, it's, it's something that uh, it's, Microsoft made it, but mm -hmm. it's just not in our hotkey by natively. So just we created uh, some, some group of functions called, I think it's LV, EX, LV, something like mm -hmm. that where it has these functions that are borrowed from my project. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's it, it's, it's, uh, well, the other script that I have here is just CB autocomplete. That's uh, a combo box where you type things and it autocompletes. It's that I use here. That's, I think that's all my contributions. <laughs> Those are also a lot. So uh, I, think, <laughs> I think you're good. Thanks. Uh, is there any other questions? Is my audio coming through okay? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, that combo box, I almost used that as the, uh, the script to highlight because I saw that on the forum today. I'm like, oh, Look at that. Here's here's something else from you. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe we'll do that next time because it, it did look pretty interesting. It's a great functionality to have in, in anything you're doing, right? To have that auto assist typing stuff. Very cool. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, how how is that actually? Oh, if we're reviewing that next time. No, but how is that <laughs> um we got him here. Let's have him. Yeah, let's have him show it. Yeah, because yeah. I saw it. It was using great way of sampling its uh, idea. So yeah, you're welcome to show off a bit about that. Thanks for having me. Is that something, Rodolfo, that you can show? Uh, an, like just a working example of the combo box? Is that easy? Combo box, sure. Let me project here. And thank you so much for, I mean, it's one of those things, It, in some ways, sometimes it feels, even though people do write you occasionally say thank you, it, it sometimes can feel like a thankless job, but um, you, you know, thousands of people, you know, use your tool and, and do appreciate it. It's it's just, it's great to hear that. <laughs> so I hope you, you understand, you know, that for of every course, one person well, that actually reaches out to you and says, says that uh, there's, you know, thousands Sorry, sorry to cut you. <laughs> now, by the way, what editor are you are you actually using? Visual Studio. That's the VS Code, yeah. VS yeah. Code, yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought the, I thought Visual Studio and VS Code weren't necessarily the same tools. Uh, no, I think it's it's VS Code, right? It's, it's yeah, it is VS Code, but yeah, yeah but we can also get do something else, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I don't know if I modify this for some reason. Oh, no, but I wouldn't understand if he doesn't code that much on um, on Windows. He probably doesn't use VS uh, Studio because VS Studio. I'm not sure if you can use it in Linux. No, no, I use I use IntelliJ. Okay, yeah, that's different. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could use IntelliJ for hotkey. IntelliJ is awesome, really. So the function is basically this. It's it can be it could be written um, more compact, yeah, I know, but I wanted to 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 make it uh, readable. So I, I, I like this this style better. So uh, it's 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 very simple. I just use a, a, try to a send message to 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 find 
what's being typed and look up in the list and, 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 and complete it. And then I set the selection for the, the remaining of the, the text here. So this, this is things that, I, that you, can, you can find some this, this commands. I have also a, a library by just me again, that he has all this, this codes for a person. So you, you usually you go to, to write something like that. You go to, to Microsoft websites, you learn what, what you have to do, and you find the code that corresponds to, 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 to the command you need, and you send message or post message. Mm -hmm. The example that I have uses some um, Windows folder. Files in this folder, and that's simple as that. So it's going to complete it. So it looks a lot like um, other uh, apps, autocomplete. Uh, it, it will work if uh, just one thing that I uh, I've not I noticed in. My, in the trial form that I don't have a very good method to to find when stuff is being uh, deleted. I just check uh, the state of delete or back state back uh, backspace. backspace. Key. Yeah. yeah, but for example, if I type something here, uh, what up? I go here and try to delete it. I can detect that. But that's hmm. just the only drawback. Other than yeah. that, it's and is that a fuzzy match or that's a, a perfect string match? It's got to be exact. Uh, it's got to be exact. Yeah. It's, it doesn't have anything like wild card or anything like that. That could be improved. It's it's there for anyone who wants to. Geez, there are some some other versions in the thread itself. People have some different preferences of behavior. Mm -hmm. That's quite. But the, the, all those things came from PMC. It's by trying to improve. Uh, I, I, cool. came up with those I wanted. I, I, I like this project. I, I didn't. I didn't have to to make it this big, but I wanted. I wanted to look great. It's something that I'm proud of. Yeah. And, and, and I, yeah, remember I was going to say when we were talking. That's. Uh, I, I I don't mind some people who. who say bad things that doesn't like it because the amount of people enjoying it and, and giving me good feedback it's far greater and and I, and I understand even people who, who, who think that oh I don't use it because of that because that but they have their reasons that's just preference it's and like I said it's not a tool mint for auto hotkey user it's not meant to learn auto hotkey but you can use for that but it's a tool of its own. It's, it, it, it does what it, it, what it says it does. It's, it's an automation tool for Windows. That's it. Yeah. Very cool, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Did, did anyone else have any other, any questions about this or, or about, I guess here, if you don't have questions specifically uh, for Rodolfo on his stuff. I mean, do you have other things that you had questions on with Auto Hotkey that you were trying to work through? Do you have something you want to share? Everyone I'm seeing a lot of comments and saying, yeah, they're very impressed with your tool. Uh, you. And, you know, and for me, and, and this is where Jack and I have been talking about for years, but now, and, and Isaiah and I talk a lot about it, I guess he, oh, there he is, um, is I know he's going to agree with me. Your code is very reason uh, uh, easy to read, you know, structured, clean, and it makes such a difference. It makes it so much easier to, uh, to follow. Even if you're not that advanced, it just, you could easily condense it all um, and make it so hard to, to read that, you know, oh yeah, it's, it's, uh, 
it's it's fewer lines, but who cares, right? Like it, it's really great to hear from someone who is a programmer that like your ideal shouldn't be the most densely populated code, right? It's it's being able to go back in and, and be able to read it later and let other people read it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's huge. Yeah, yeah I, I, and that's something I, I bring with me since I started writing out Kichu, right clean code. It's important for other people. If, if someone else is going to, to, to update your code, it's got to be readable. It's got to be something that's clean and easy to read. You see, it's impressive when you see some, you see some functions, one line function by scan that does this, it's miracle stuff. Wow, it's impressive, yes, but it's hard to, to look at that and make sense of it. <laughs> well, um, now this is the thing. Um, you uh, let your code be open source, right? So it, just the fact that it is written in a way that we could understand gives you more chance to, for some other people to say, well, let me help you. When it is something that only you understand, like even if I want to help, well, it's going to be very difficult for me to say, okay, let me take the time to go ahead and understand this guy's mind. And then let me add the thing that I wanted to add, you know, like it's going to be more difficult for you to get help, you know? Exactly. Uh, there are some people who, who found uh, bugs or wanted to do improvements and just searched and found where, where it was. And that, well, that's great because, well, it's something that other people can, can do because I'm not going to work on this project forever. So I hope it, it has a long life. It's, it's, it, it's got to be yeah. improved or fixed or something. It's, at some time, it's not going to be me. So I hope someone else takes it some, at some point. Yeah, yeah that, that actually prolongs the lifetime of your product, by the way. Yeah. But I'm going to, to, to maintain it for some time. Yes, I'm not going to ban it so soon. <laughs> you know, and I am when I had our little interview back, what was that, a month ago, I think you and I chatted. Um, it was very inspiring to me when I was asking you about how, you know, how did you create this and stuff? And you said, you know, and I also said, if you thought about charging for it, you know, in any sort of way or whatever. Um, and it was, it was really cool to hear you say, well, when I was looking for a tool, like everything that was out there was paid and I wanted to create a tool that was for free. And like I said, I think that's awesome, right? Like it, it, at the same time, I, I think if people help donate, it does, it, it gives you encouragement, right? To kind of keep keep doing stuff, right? Because it be, people don't even understand, not only are you volunteering your time on stuff, you have expenses, right? Like having servers and, and do, buying the domain and just doing stuff, like there's cost. And we were working on this with uh, some of our stuff of should we do code signing? And like it was we finally said, you know what? If we're just not even going to do it. We're going to hash and code, you know, get the hash value for it, and just not bother code signing because it was—it's just such a headache and a cost. Um, but yeah, it's—it's it's really cool that you. And to make sure you make it clear, but, I'm not against charging, even if it's your right open source, even if you're writing not a hotkey, you you should charge for work. It's your right. Yeah. I, I, I just. This is something that I wanted to do. I wanted to, to, to give the world something that was a, a professional automation to interface with an interface that was free for everyone because we can't, I, I couldn't afford JitBit uh, automation anywhere and I still can't. <laughs> so uh, it, it, I, I'm happy that it's, it's not, it's not the, well, there are, there are things that, that people might miss, that people that still want it, and things that I, I, I even say, well, I'm not going to, to add that feature because I don't have the time for that. You get that and get the, the, the program as it is, but it's still a great tool. And I, yeah, but, but by any means, no, it's not because you see, oh, but you, can, uh, you shouldn't charge for auto hotkey because auto hotkey is free. No, JavaScript is free, Java is free. <laughs> What's the point? Great point. Great point. Right. The, the other thing I'd say is, and, and I know Jackie and I are on par of this, is like, we, we both love, I mean, we talk a lot about auto hockey. It's changed our lives. And we know, like, your tool 
brings so many auto hockey to people. It gets them started, right? It's that one of the first steps they'll take to start learning it because they may not want to start programming, but they'll find your tool, they'll use it. Hey, I did some stuff. And then it, it might make them realize, hey, you know, maybe there's something to this. Maybe I can start looking at the code and it just, it leads to a better life, right? It's really cool. Awesome. Unless, unless anyone else. Oh, go ahead, Jackie. No, I was just going to follow up and then say, yeah, absolutely. Doesn't really matter if people don't come for the other hot key. If they stay long enough with the tool like yours, they'll probably end up either looking at code window or or have some kind of issue that they'll go to to you or some other hot key source somewhere to try and figure out. And that'll pull them in anyway. So yeah, I think it's it's a great thing. Well, you know, and I think it's a, it's really awesome that Tank and, and Tank, you know, it's all, he 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 really also has a passion for auto hockey and helping people, you know, learn how to automate their lives, right? So the fact that he created you a sub forum is awesome because if it wasn't there, you know, like the fact it's on the auto hockey forum. Some people will venture out, right? Like I'm sure if we if we really cared to, we could get metrics and see people start on your sub forum, you know, do it there, but they end up, you know, over time venturing out and actually learning auto hockey code, which is again, it, it's just awesome. Yeah, I have to, that too, of course. Cool. Well, um, we're coming up at the end of the time. If did anyone else have any again, did you have any? I saw someone asked about uh, an uh, uh, Auto Hockey Studio plugin for Git. I, I I don't use it, so I don't know how to configure it. Um, we can we can ask Maestri to help at some point with that. Um, but was there any other questions? Did anybody have anything they wanted to to share or to solve real quickly in seventeen minutes? <laughs> quickly in seventeen. Okay. Minutes. Well, if we're not, we're good. <laughs> Very good. I'm sorry, go ahead. Isaiah says laugh. Well, I was laughing because uh, all the last two, two to three days, we've been dealing with these power outages. We'll jump on Zoom and we're like, okay, and we'll start working. And then my power goes out, you know, and it's like it's gone. Um, so it's like it's we've learned a new way to be productive of like do it as fast as you can. Like just you know, it's going to die. Yeah. And not only that, the, the other thing is that there's these type of problems that they look very simple. Like they're so simple. And you say like, yeah, I can fix that in 10 minutes, right? And then you start doing the, right. the 10 right. minute thing, right? And it becomes one hour, two hours. And then you say like, oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna no. leave this off. I'm not gonna do that. You know, like, come on. <laughs> cool. And um, Isaiah, I, I think I, I can't remember if you were on when I mentioned it, but um, probably the next webinar where we'll have you lead us in VS Code in showing how to use it incorporated with Git um, in, okay. and how amazing that function out, especially when you're working with more, you know, just, I know it's great when you do it by yourself, but when you're working with more than one person, I got to say, it's a must. Like it's all, you, you really can't work with more than one with, I'm sorry. Yeah. With, you can't work with additional people easily and be coding, you know, working in the same code and keep track of stuff. It's just such a pain. Right. So Git yeah. makes it super, super easy. Very good. Yeah. We're going to be taking a look at right, everyone. Thank you so much. And yeah, we're going to take a look at VS Code and how to uh, connect to GitHub really quickly, and that's it, you know? Cool. Thanks, everyone. Joe. Have a great day. Thanks Stay so warm. Much. Sorry about my internet. Yeah, absolutely, Thanks, Joe. Now, bye, everyone. See you. Bye, bye then. We'll talk later. Yeah, and thank you, bye. Rodolfo, once again. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I like Not just for being here, people. but for your tool. It's I'm awesome. Yeah. Yourselves because what you are doing with tutorials and teaching people how to do stuff like that, that's so important to your life series as well. So thank you for thank all you. your action. We'll talk later, man. See ya. Bye. Bye.